Welcome to Mind of a Scientist. I'm excited to introduce software engineer and open source pioneer, Devin Price. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Devin Price. Uh, I grew up in Sebastopol, but now I live out here in Austin, Texas, and I am a web developer or software engineer. I work for a company called Universal Yums. Um, it's a snack box company. The main company is based out of New Jersey, um, but I, my team, which is the web development team, is completely distributed. So I live here in Austin, Texas, um, and we work with um, a couple other developers. One's in San Antonio, another is in uh, Slovenia, and another is in, in Croatia. And so we all work together on um, the universalyums.com website and uh, try and make great experiences for, for customers to learn about our product and, and check out. Um, and I put together a couple kind of slides to show you a little more in detail about what I do. I, I work for a company called Universal Yums. Um, and, and we sell a subscription box. So a, a box that comes to your doorstep every month um, with snacks from around the world. So every, every month is a, a different country. Um, this last, uh, this month we're doing Ukraine. Last month we, we did Netherlands. So here you can see um, our, our box here with some of the, the snacks from the Netherlands here. Um, the, there's a ton of steps involved in, in putting together like a snack box like this, um, a lot more than you, you might think. So we start planning uh, six to 12 months before we send these subscription boxes out. Uh, we, we pick out the country. Um, we, we contact vendors that, that produce the snacks in these countries. Uh, we ship all those to the United States. We have a team that, that samples all the snacks, decides what, what's gonna go in the box. Um, we have a lot of compliance stuff because when you're bringing in food from another country, uh, we got to make sure that the, the ingredients that go into that food can be sold in the United States, that it's safe, um, that the labeling is correct. Uh, there's a, a ton of shipping logistics. So, uh, you know, we have a guy who's like always on the phone to like Egypt or Ukraine or Russia and figuring out how to get uh, pallets of snacks from, from the place where they're made to a port, get them on a ship. Um, get them across the ocean to, to New Jersey, get into the warehouses in the New Jersey, go through customs and everything. Um, and then we have a team that does a, makes the booklets that go in our, our boxes too. So we have graphic designers, copywriters, uh, photographers, um, and here, here's one of our, our booklets here that the designers put together. Um, so once the stuff comes in through the port, um, gets delivered to our, our warehouse. Here's, here's a shot of the warehouse where um, people are um, getting all the snacks together. And then these are the boxes right before they go out. So we have, um, we did pink <laughs> this month because uh, Valentine's Day. So each of these boxes uh, has, has the snacks that go out. And so my role in this as a web developer is, uh, you know, I, I build the website. Uh, we don't sell our boxes in any stores. So to if you want to purchase a box or you want to learn about it, you need to go to our, our website here. So it's basically our storefront. Um, and this is a, a, like a, if you were looking at a computer and <laughs> looking at this website, but um, you know, most of our customers are actually on their phone. So you got to make sure that the website looks good on a phone and, and works well on, on smaller screens. And um, this is kind of a, a simulator here where I can test out a bunch of different phones and, and see what the website looks like on those. Um, in terms of like what, what I actually build out, like um, this is something that we did last summer. Uh, so before we'd only sell a subscription box, so you could only order the box. And then we decided we were gonna start selling the individual products in the box too. So after you got the box, if there was something that you really liked, um, you would be able to purchase that as well. So this is uh, one of our shop pages now with the, an individual product. Um, and the way that got built is someone on our design team, you know, designed what this page was going to look like. They handed it off to my team. Um, 
we had some back and forth about how exactly to build it, what the different animations would be, how it's going to look on small screens, how's it going to look on, on big screens. And then we got in and started coding it um, and then eventually like released it out so that people could purchase. Um, this is kind of a, a back end view, like the, the dashboard that uh, the administrators on the site have. This is an order page, but um, we use a, a software called WordPress, which is actually open source um, software. It's originally a, a blog platform for people, um, but you can build all sorts of sites with WordPress. Um, and we have a plugin called uh, WooCommerce, which allows us uh, to do the e-commerce aspect. So it helps us to um, set up our products, uh, manage the orders, um, take payments. Um, a, a typical day for me is, um, is Slack, which is basically a, a messaging tool, like a group message. And this is a, a channel I'm in with the development team. And we're basically in here all day asking questions, helping each other out. Um, when, when things come up on the website, we can uh, collaborate together. And like I said, there's, um, my team is all over. So Daniel is in San Antonio, um, Igor is in, is in Croatia and um, Matisse is in Slovenia. So um, we're, we're in somewhat different time zones, but we have some time together in the morning where we all kind of overlap. Um, and then the rest of the time we, we kind of work independently when we're, um, when other people aren't also online. Uh, to do our work, we use a, a tool called GitHub a lot. It's a, it's a website for um, sharing code. Um, so this is a, a shot from, from GitHub. And, and like you can see some of the issues. This isn't our project, but there's some issues in, in this project that um, developers are working on and collaborating on together. Um, this is a view from our project. So this is how we manage all our tasks that we do. We have, you know, planned items in development, things that are ready for code review and ready to go out onto the site. Um, just so you can see how we collaborate. So how it works is if somebody is working on a bug or a feature or something, they, they check out a copy of the code. They make their changes, uh, fix the bug. They work locally on their own machine. And then they push those changes back up to GitHub. And then uh, using this tool, you can see what changes they made. So if uh, Daniel in San Antonio fixes a bug, he'll, he'll push up those code changes. And then I will take a look at, at what he did. And I, I review his work. And sometimes I have suggestions for how to improve it. Um, and if so, I'll, I'll just comment on those. Uh, if he's going to make more changes, he'll, he'll take it back down. He'll make those changes, push it back up. So it's like a real collaborative uh, way of working. Um, and it's one of the aspects of software development that I really like because, you know, when I push up code, you know, people on my team can look at that and help me improve as a developer and, and offer suggestions. And we're all kind of collaborating together to make the best uh, product that we can and release the best code that we can. Um, and so day to day, this is actually on my, my local machine. There's a screenshot of... Uh, my code editor, um, and when I'm actually working on the code, I have this open, and I have a um, I'm running the code locally on my own machine, so I can test it as I work on it, and then when I finish it, I, I push it up. Uh, Milo asked me to talk about my path to software development because it's uh, maybe a little more unusual. I didn't like go directly to school. Um, for a computer science. I was always interested in computers. So this is an Apple IIe. This is one of the first computers I worked on <laughs> when I was a kid, um, before computers were absolutely everywhere like they are now. Um, I went to college at um, University of Santa Cruz. Um, and I, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I, I went to college, um, but I, I knew I wanted to go to college and, and continue learning. Um, and Santa Cruz was great school for that. I So I thought about doing um, computer science there and I took a couple courses, but I actually didn't like it because the computer science department was kind of in the basement of a building. I was just like on a computer like late into the night um, looking for semicolons and, and debugging software and it didn't seem like a lot of fun. And what seemed like more fun was studying abroad in Chile 
which is what I did. This is the family I, I stayed with there. And I ended up getting a, a degree in, in Latin American studies. So not, not a science degree or a STEM degree at all. Um, also, when I was at Santa Cruz, I drove the buses. That was my student job. Um, and then when I, I graduated from college, I, I realized there weren't really jobs in Latin American studies, or at least a, like a job that I could find. Um, and so the, the really useful skill at that time I'd learned at college was driving buses. So I went up to Alaska and I um, drove buses for a summer and, and saved money. This is uh, one of the types of buses I would drive up there. Um, and afterwards, I, I saved up money in Alaska and I decided to go down to Costa Rica again. And I uh, started working with an organization, a nonprofit called Habitat for Humanity. And they build houses uh, for people around the world that, that need housing. And um, it, it was a really fun organization to work with down there. And I learned a lot. Um, I, I did help out building some houses as uh, Wilfred who I worked with. Um, but where they really needed help was actually in the office um, with communicating to donors and to people who wanted to come uh, to Costa Rica and, and volunteer or, or to donate. So I ended up uh, building a website for them because I, I knew how to <laughs> build websites. Uh, I just kind of picked it up uh, tinkering with computers. Um, this isn't the website I built, but I, I, I pulled it down today and it looks like a website I, I could have built at that time, which is a very simple uh, website, um, but it, it was really useful for them. And after I came back from, from Costa Rica, I got a job at a biodiesel company because I was really interested in um, environmentalism. And so I worked at this biodiesel factory. I was in the factory a lot, but the thing they needed was a website too. And I ended up building a website for them. And then next job, I, I worked at a bicycle tour company <laughs> in Santa Rosa. So all these like very random jobs. Um, and I was an office manager in, in the, uh, for the tour company, but I also went out on tour in Healdsburg and Santa Rosa and, and wine country and took people out on tours. And what they needed was a website. So I built a website for them. And while I was doing that, I, I decided, hey, I'm really building websites for all these companies I work at. Maybe I should just build websites. Um, and I took some classes at the junior college. Uh, Santa Rosa Junior College and uh, learned CSS and HTML and uh, like improved on what I was doing because I had been totally self-taught at that point. Um, eventually moved up to Portland and I, I got a job um, working for a, a company um, basically building websites and um, I also at that time found a, a piece of software called WordPress. It's open source software, which means that um, anyone can download it for free. Anyone can edit it and change it and anyone can use it. Um, and through WordPress, I really found a community of developers and um, I was able to uh, suggest improvements to that software. And because it's all open source, anyone can suggest improvements, anyone can uh, push code up and um, improve the code for that. Uh, here I am giving a, a talk on WordPress uh, a year or two after I started using it. Um, and so I've been doing, you know, WordPress development since. I, I've worked at a number of different companies. I worked at a, a media company called Demand Media. Um, I work for a health company where I help build um, websites around health and wellness and also mobile applications. So iPhone apps and um, Android applications. Um, and now at Universal Young's, obviously I'm doing uh, commerce. Um, so, you know, with this skill set of web development or software engineering, you can, you know, work at a ton of different companies um, and, and find a company that you're interested in um, and, and contribute a lot to these. So. What I really like about my job is um, there's interesting problems to work on. Um, every day there's, there's new things that I have to learn. Um, I get to collaborate with people all around the world. Uh, so, you know, my team is totally distributed and we're continuing to hire new people. Um, and also, you know, 
we, we build software and websites and stuff for our company, but there's also a lot of components used to build websites that other people develop and you can collaborate with other people around the world, like a, a little piece of a website that you might want to use like a contact form or something. You don't build that from scratch. You, um, you know, import a library or use a plugin that somebody else has developed, but then you might have improvements. So you, you can work with them on that. Um, I love seeing people use what I make. So um, at Universal Yums, we have, you know, <laughs> hundreds and thousands of sales a day. Um, a lot of visitors on the website, a lot of people checking it out. Um, the other thing I really like about this profession is you can do it from every, anywhere. So now with like COVID, right, a lot of people are working from home, um, but uh, I, I have worked distributed for a long time. Uh, a couple companies I've worked for have been totally distributed in the past. So hundreds of web engineers and they're all around the world. Um, in this company, you know, I was hired before uh, COVID hit, but um, they're based in New Jersey and I'm here in Austin, Texas. Um, and throughout my career, I, I've been able to go to Thailand, I've been able to go to Argentina and Cambodia and different places and uh, work and, and travel. And I love that flexibility. Um, and then the other thing about uh, software engineering and web development is it, it pays really well. So um, if I had continued in a track of bus driving, which I enjoyed and it was a lot of fun, um, but you know, you can earn a lot more doing web development. So that's really great. Um, kind of my tips for success are, you know, to always be curious. Like I, I had a bunch of different jobs and kept looking for different things until I found a, a profession that I really loved. Um, and, and being curious is really good in, in web development because there's constantly new technologies like, um, you know, initially we were just building websites for computers, big screens, and then mobile devices came out. So you got to figure out, oh, how do we make a, a website work on this? Um, there's constantly new frameworks and libraries and different techniques for building websites that are coming out and you got to keep learning. Um, and the other thing that's really benefited me is uh, sharing what I work on. So when I first started uh, working with WordPress, I started blogging about what I was working on. I'd share the code that I was working on. If I developed something that I thought was useful, I would release it and let people, other people use it. Um, and I got a really great community of developers through that um, around the world. Um, so there, there's a lot of people who I've been talking to online for 10 or 12 years, and then I finally meet them in person and, and we have a connection and they use something that I've built and released. And, and that's really cool. Um, so that's, that's my presentation. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much, Devin. Uh, if you wouldn't mind stopping screen share. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, while students are typing in their questions, I was wondering if you could talk about some of the principles of web design and how you evaluate a website's format and design. You know, the main things I look at when, when building websites is a lot of times the designers come to us with like a design they have in mind and, and you look at it and you try and figure out, okay, can this work? on the web, how you've designed it. So does it work on a desktop screen? Does it work on a mobile device? Um, work through that. And then the other things as you're building it out is, is it usable? Can people find the information that they want? Can they click on the things that they need to? Does it, does it work? <laughs> does it do what it's supposed to? Um, and then the other thing is, does it, can you get it to load fast um, so that people aren't like waiting a long time to get, to get what they need? And how do you incorporate user feedback? Um, so, you know, on, on the Universal Yums uh, website, we have a ton of people using it. So customers sometimes write in and they're like, hey, this was confusing or this was hard or I had trouble uh, checking out here. And the customer service team uh, forwards those over to my team. And, and we look at it and a lot of times 
uh, we can make improvements to the website um, to um, improve the experience there. Um, and then, you know, we get feedback from other members of our team, like about what sorts of things to feature or what the page should have. Um, and those aren't always like our, our roles to decide like, hey, we should have this or that. But um, a lot of times we will test something. So if somebody has an idea for, hey, we think we can improve checkout or make the our message to the customers a little clearer, which might entice them to, to purchase the product, we'll we'll code out another version of the website or you know a different header or a different tagline. And we can actually run two versions of the website at the same time. And we run them for a week or two and we see which one actually does better. So it's not using our gut judgment to decide this is better, this is better. We let um, the visitors of the website kind of decide um, based on you know the goals that we have set out. Mm -hmm. Carrie is wondering, what would you say is the most important piece of advice to succeed in your field? Yeah, just uh, curiosity, I, I think, to like continue learning and then like actually releasing the stuff that you do into the world. So, you know, the first website I made was not like a great website, but I, I released it anyways. And, um, you know, the next one, you know, was probably a little bit better. And the next one after that was a little bit better. And every project you learn new things and you, you get better. Um, so if you're interested in, in doing web development or software development, you know, you, it takes practice and your, your first things are not going to be great. Um, but don't be afraid to put them out in the world <laughs> if they're not perfect. And, you know, what happened in my case is I, I would release plugins for, for WordPress and, um, they were useful and they solved something, but they maybe weren't, they could be better coded. And that's where that open source community really helped and people would say, hey, have you thought about doing it this way? Or they'd even um, do a pull request. They'd change my code and submit it back to me and uh, improve the project. And I'd learn through what they did as well. Stefan is wondering, would you say that your experience is building websites for companies, quote unquote, in the wild helped you gain more knowledge about software engineering than in college? Well, I only took a couple <laughs> classes in college in uh, computer science, so I I didn't learn a lot in college. I, I'd say the classes I took later at the Santa Rosa Junior College were actually more useful because at that point I was like, hey, I really want to make websites. I was really interested in it, and I picked the perfect class for me that helped, um, helped me learn what I needed to learn. Um, but now, um, like I, I recently learned React, which is a, a JavaScript framework a, a couple years ago. And the way I learned that is I watched a bunch of videos <laughs> online. So uh, somebody has a, a video series uh, that I liked and I watched it all the way. I did the, the test projects. And at the end of that, I had a really good understanding of it. So I would say you, you can definitely learn computer science in uh, college and there's some, some good courses for that. Um, but you don't need to wait for college and it's definitely not necessary because there are like so many great resources online for learning it. Um, but I would say what is really useful is if you can find a, a mentor. Um, so if, if you're doing a more self-taught route or doing online courses to learn what you want, it's really helpful to have someone who's just a little bit ahead of you or you can call when you get stuck somewhere um, rather than banging your head against something for like four or five hours have someone who's just like, hey, you can solve it, just just do this. Um, and, and that's always helpful. Hmm. Jake is wondering, how do you handle cross-platform web design and how much thought is put into mobile-desktop compatibility in the process of making a website? Yeah, I mean, it, it's super important um, for what we do at Universal Yums. In fact, the, the mobile is uh, more Im important. Um, we have Google Analytics on the website, so it kind of gives us an idea of uh, what devices people are using. Um, 
So when I look at that data and I'm like, oh, most people, like 50% of our users, customers are coming in on an iPhone. I, you know, I figure out what iPhone and I, I make sure that we test that when we're rolling out new, new layouts and then kind of go through the rest of the browsers um, in terms of how, how much of our customer base uses them. Um, and obviously I don't have every device in the world, um, but I use browser stack to do some of the device uh, testing. Um, and also in a Chrome browser, whatever browser you use, you can make the screen um, small and kind of see how it would render on those smaller devices. Hmm. Are a lot of the people you connect with around the world self-taught? Yes. A lot of the people, especially people in, in open source, um, I, I know very few people who have, I mean, there are some, um, but a, a lot of the people I've worked with in my career have had a liberal arts like education or um, a totally different sort of education than computer science. Um, but one of the most important things in, in this role is an ability to communicate really well, to, to write really well, because you know a lot of times you're not, you know, especially now, not in an office with someone. So um, you, you can't really achieve what you want to do unless you can communicate really well with everyone and figure out what the problem is and how you're going to approach it. Um, and that's, so that's you know equally important as like writing good code and releasing it is to be able to communicate with people. Um, hmm. Sophia is asking, how much data can you test? Can you test how many time, times things are clicked, scrolled through, et cetera? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, there are like tools that allow you to um, kind of map all the user interactions. Um, we, do, we don't run those on, on universal YAMs, um, but we do, we do have if, if we wanted to measure like how often someone is clicking on a certain button in the page, you can uh, wire those up for events so that when someone does click, you, you signal an event and then you can see how many of those events fired over a particular period of time. I mean, some of the events we do track is obviously checkout events and um, order events and add to cart events. Um, those are things that we do watch on the e-commerce site. Um, but yeah, you can you can instrument pretty much anything uh, that you want to and, and get the data that you want. Hmm. Hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Devin. That wraps up our recorded segment.